All right, it's time for December 2019 Lush Club's Painting of the Month, which is this pine tree with an ornament. You have the list of paintings, or the list of paint, and the list of supplies over on the 2019 Lush Club page. So you should have all of your supplies gathered, and then we can get started on this painting. All right, let's do this. All right, so we are going to spray our surface with some water and then my sprayer was a little strong. So I then kind of worked it in with my large flat brush. Then we move on to the background and so we're using a combination of white with a little bit of kitty pool and also a little bit of Payne's Gray. And we're just gonna go back and forth adding this. We want it to be overall very light because we want it to seem like a wintry light day. And we'll just keep working that until we have kind of a fun blended background of those three tones. If it feels like it's dry, you can always add a little bit of water to your paint as well because it's that time of year where everything just kind of dries out. Uh, once you've started on this, I wouldn't spray more on your canvas, but I would spray my, my paint with some water to try and get a better overall blend. All right, next we're gonna make kind of a modeled background. So we're gonna put a lot of water in our Payne's Gray and mix that up. And it's a very watery, almost like watercolor effect. And once we get that on our round brush, we're just gonna kind of roll it onto the surface. And I just put a little bit and then I work it in with my fingers. And all this is doing is giving you kind of this modeled look in the background that gives another texture to it and you just keep going you work your way around you don't do it everywhere you just kind of pick and choose where you want to do it and I just keep working it in with my fingers until I'm happy with the way that it looks and I do this all the way around the surface the great thing about this painting is you could do it on any size surface so I encourage you, if, you're, if you've been wanting to paint big, this would be a great one to paint really big because it is so adjustable to any size. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing with the kiddie pool. You can see I kind of made a mess and then I just cleaned it up. It's not a big deal. I wet down the kiddie pool so it is like watercolor and then I start working that around in different areas that maybe need a little bit more coverage. It doesn't make a huge difference and really on camera you can't even tell that there's a difference but it's just a little bit of something, especially if there was an area of your canvas that seemed a little dry. This is a great way to go back in and kind of mask that a little bit. And it just helps to give that variance of tones throughout that painting. And it kind of gives it that marbleized look, which is what I'm going for.
All right, we're gonna take some Payne's Gray and our small flat brush, and we're just gonna make some branches. You can make as many or as few as you want. And I'm just having them come from one side of the painting because that's where my tree is. It's over that direction off canvas. All right, and then I'm gonna do a combination of the sap green every once in a while some Payne's Gray, and every once in a while some Kitty Pool, and some white. And I'm just varying the different like uh, pine needles so that they all have a different tone as I go down. And sometimes they kind of curve backwards, and sometimes they kind of curve up. So you wanna change the direction of your needles, and it'll give it a more organic, real look if you do that and you also want to make sure that you're changing the tones on those needles so that it also gives it a more natural organic look and i just work my way down those stems i'm covering up where that branch was you won't even be able to see it at the end but it gave me the idea and the direction of where each of those branches were going to go you could make these a little fluffier if you wanted. You could make them a little straighter if you wanted. It's completely and totally up to you. And this is where you can really personalize this however you want. All right, now we're gonna add our ornament. And so what I want you to do is look for some round objects around your house. And then you're gonna hold them up and see which is the right size. So here I showed you three different options of things that I considered. And then I'm gonna go with this coaster because it was the right size for the painting. And I just trace it out with a pencil and then I can see my lines. And then I'm gonna start to paint a few little speckles. Uh, this is not necessary part of it. If you look at this and you're like, ah, I don't really like that, you obviously don't have to do it, but I take a little of the sap green on my round brush, wet it down really well, and then I splatter paint a little of that sap green around my branches. It just gives another element of texture. We're gonna add some splatter snow later, 
Um, and this just gives it kind of a fun, whimsical look. So it's completely up to you if you want to include that or skip it. Next, we're going to move on and paint our ornament. So depending on what color you want to do, you can use whatever colors are in your, you know, craft supplies. So I decided to use some purple. So I have a light purple that is called Amethyst and then a little white. And then I also have a darker purple in the premium acrylic paint. And so I'm just going to add a shadow and a highlight. And I just kind of work that in. It's not super specific at this point because we're going to put some glitter paint over this. But if you are not going to use glitter paint, you may want to be a little bit more conscientious about where you're painting and how your highlights and low lights are. But because I'm going to cover this up, I just want to make sure that I have some variance in there and I'm not super concerned on um, like all the little details of that. All right, and we're going to add the little thing that's at the top of the ornament. I'm not sure if there's a name for this, but it's just that little top part. And we're just going to kind of rub in some Payne's gray and some white. You could use your small flat. You could use your small round. You could use your liner. You can use whatever you want that you feel most comfortable getting that in there. And it just has, you know, a little bit of darker um, kind of contrast on the outside to give it a better shape. And I'm just gonna play with that until I'm happy with the way it looks. And then I'm gonna add a little hook. You can't see the entire hook because it's hidden behind those pine needles, but hopefully you can kind of make out where it goes. All right, now everybody's favorite part is glitter paint. So I just squirt a generous, generous, generous portion of the glitter paint. And the one I used was by Glitterific. It's the one that I prefer. It kind of has like little pieces of confetti in it too. So they're a little wider. And you can find that at um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And I just have really liked it. I think I've seen it more at Hobby Lobby than I have at Michael's, come to think of it. And I just kind of rub that in with my finger until the entire surface of the ornament is covered. And it has kind of a glue-like consistency. So you want to work this part while it's still wet. And I just kind of dab in some of that darker purple to create a more shadow look. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with the little white. Again, you have to do this while the glitter paint is still wet for the best effect. And it kind of helps give this little marbly highlight, low light look, which I really like. So you could also skip that as well, but I think it really adds to the effect. And I hope you experiment with it. All right, next we are going to do some splatter. So what you're gonna wanna do is get your white really wet and then you're going to put it on your brush and then hit it against your palette knife or another brush if you don't have a palette knife and you're going to splatter in the white. I do it everywhere so that it looks like it's snowing on everything. So if it gets on my ornament, that's fine. If it gets on the tree, that's great. If it gets on the background, it's great. It just gives all that snowy look to everything. I painted this one yesterday and I want you to see that I then went back and added a few of the branches over the ornament so that it looks like it's kind of hidden amongst the branches. You could either do that or you could have the branches behind it. Either way is fine. 
You just need to make sure that however you do it, you have paid attention to where that stops and starts because it does give it a little bit more interest when it's in the front. I hope you enjoyed this last class of 2019 and we hope to see you in 2020 for all of our online classes.